Hello, welcome back to my blog, Eddie's English Literature. Today we are going to read John Kate's beautiful ode, Ode to Night Angel. The night angel's ode, or the bard night angel, is so famous in English poetry. From Old English to the Middle English and to the modern poet, night angel fascinates so many of the poets, so many of the authors. But in each and every time, Night Angel renders a new message and that message to be deciphered in a new way. And to the romantic poet John Keats, Night Angel is harbinger of a new message of romanticism, of new birth, a new life, a new awakening of understanding, as well as a new plethora of leading one's imagination into new destination of living with life to the poetic genius of kids in which he is full of pathos and is full of despairs and personal losses but in night angle there is rejuvenation there is new life there is new awakening and that awakening is being reported in Odwe night angle in fact Odwe night angle which has been composed in a friend's house uh, while idly sitting in a garden and at that very mood the poet had been in a pensive mood rather he has recently lost his brother and his own love affairs with brown is not having such presence and his own health is deteriorating and as he was listening at the garden in his friend's home he has jotted down hastily a few of the lines and those lines rather rearranged by his own friend and it has become a beautiful English poetry and to a English literature students you should read minutely the Ode to a Night Angle. So we are just going to read a beautiful poem but before you venture into the poem must have that criterion of understanding in you that John Keats is a romantic poet and basically all of the romantic poets leads to nature what the nature delivers to John Keats is the basic understanding that you must have to learn first the nature to John Keats is a sensuous appeal a appeal of colors a appeal of senses a appeal of beauty and that beauty is itself a romantic exuberance, a romantic expression to John Keats and his love of medical sciences as he had been a student of medical sciences. So there is some medical references of psych psychic references like that and in John Keats you will find Greek love, a love for Hellenisms and in John Keats there is also a beautiful heart and that heart is human. It is, it is never uh, burdened with any sort of artificiality. So in John Keats you will find a beautiful human being in poetry. And in Old Grey Night Angle you will find John Keats' own inner mind spoken through the voices of Night Angle. So let's begin the poem. The word ode comes from the Greek verb which means to chant or sing and obviously it is for a it might be said a kind of a lyrical poetry which is a ceremonial song. The Pindari quotes that means the Greek literature, the Pindar was the first originator of this kind of choric songs and which were performed in chorus as well as through dances. And the Horatia note uh, in stanza and a regular pattern and the poet Horace uh, later uh, rejuvenated the pattern of road into a new stanza and uh, metrical divisions and uh, those odes uh, become more a personal references than of public and this kind of shifting was most important and it becomes a poetic medium for most of the poets in later ages in English poetry, we can include Spencer, Milton, Abraham, Cowley, Dryden, and obviously the poet we are reading at present, John Keats. 
they are famous writer of odes and his old night angle is a beautiful example of Horatian Ode. Kids Urdu Night Angle begins with a note of double standard. It's Night Angle at once remembering the poet, how dejected he is in present mood of, or in conditions. The present predicament of human being, that is, if it is its individual, then there might be the story of his old father's untimely death and his love affairs with his fellow one and his ailing health. But notably, Keith's observation is that, that the right angle is making a voice. That voice attracts us into the domain of night angle's beautiful panorama or its sonorous music and its easeful and spontaneous, melodious ecstasy. But at once it remembers the poet how dejected he is. So Nightingale's music is making the poet more morose, more bold, more painful. And it remembers the poet, it reminds the poet how pathetic and dejected the human condition is. But at once. It also leads the poet into a kind of stupor, a kind of intoxication. That intoxication leads the ladder into that domain of night angle of creative, sonorous music, melodious. And that melodious escape is the very ultimate goal of the poet. So let's read the poem and analyze it. Stage one. Before we begin what to a night angle, we must have to understand one thing that a particular atmosphere is understandably needed to get into the depth of what to a night angle. What to night angle is a beautiful poem by kids. The very first stanza introduces us into the very realm of uh, kids romantic and sensual field of poetry or the very landscape of nature where he has find out a piece of Nightingale's music and that music is itself so sonorous and so enchanting that the poet wishes to escape into the imaginary world of Nightingale so to forget the real pains that he is facing in front of him the untimely death of his brother, his own illness, his frustrated love affairs. So this piece of Nightingale's music is like that of a lifeline for kids. So the poem begins with a note of that pessimism. But at once as we enter into the world of Nightingale, the poet is lost of his present predicament of losses, present predicament of boredom and the pain that he is passing through both physical and mental and he enters into the domain of night angle so the first stanza it reads my heart aches and it draws in numbness pains my senses as though of him love i had drunk or emptied some dull of it to the drains one minute past a lethe word had sung it is not to envy of thy happy lot, but being too happy in thine happiness, that thou light in it drive of the trees in some melodious plot of beech and green, and sorrows numberless, sing stop summer in full throated is the very lines emphatically wins our heart as well as the heart of John Keats. And it transports us into the realm of John Keats, into the realm of John Keats' sensuous appeal to the music of Nightingale, who is hidden into the deep green leaves of beech and tree. The poet experiences a kind of physical pain as well as mental pain 
as his both heart and body is having some predicaments of losses. He has lost that mark of life as he is presently battling out tuberculosis and his own brother John is also having is no more with us as he is dead. And his love affairs with Fanny Brown is not fruitful either. So the poet experiences a kind of a pain in his heart and that pain is so intense that it leads him into a sleepy state, into a kind of powerless feeling or a, a movement that he is physically active has made him capable of any present feelings or sensation like that of a hemlock or of young eaters he is now in deep sleep of forgetfulness and let you want as you know is the river of forgetfulness as it happens into the world of forgetfulness as it is mentioned in underworld Hades. One who crosses that river never forget, never remember the earthly things and he enters into the domain of after death or afterwards of the death. So here the same references can be found in Dream Children by Lambs where the poet says, they say, says that all those, all those dream children have crossed the oblivion, the oblivion or the state of forgetfulness as they are not reality, they are imaginary. This kind of pathetic feeling arises at this moment as he is seated on the garden and listening the very music of the night angle. He addresses the night angle personified is as a, an entity that this is not because of the happiness because of the envy of night angle whereas night angle is singing in its full throated is kids is not in the condition of enjoying the night angles music the poet's condition is like that of the polar opposite of the night angle light angle is joyous whereas the poet is sorrowful. So the poet says that it is not for the envy of a night angle. He is like that of a drunkard. He is like that of a senseless. He is like that of a incapable of extracting any feelings out of the mouth of this natural phenomena. He has just caused the lethe river of forgetfulness. But it is not for the envy, but being happy with the night angle. The poet knows that in order to enter into the domain of night angle, the poet has to cross over all those earthly sorrows, earthly burdens of feelings. If he is not possible in doing so, he will not be able to enter into the domain of night angle. Thus the poet says, that being too happy with the night angle, being into the arch of being a night angle, the poet is entering into such kind of straight of mind. Thou light winged dried, the dried is the very goddess of trees in wood name rather, and that wood name is being addressed to the night angle in the beech and tree in the beech and green so many of the hidden leaves are there and inside of it the night angle is making a soulful sound melodious sound in that shadows where he is could not be found only but the music is being arrested into the heart of night angle into the heart of john Keats, and that song is spontaneous and he is a full throated is it is loudly spontaneous full of heart and there is nothing a kind of strain that the strain is maligning the very heart of night angle the very heart of poet john Keats. as such is not the case with the night angle so the first stanza is giving us a vivid description 
of the nightingale who is singing in its full throated is at the hidden beech and green or beech and tree we must have to understand the pain to understand the very first danger kids kids acts kids pain is both mental as well as physical his physical pain if it is for the health hazards he is facing his mental pain is that of the loss of his brother as well as loss of his beloved who is a dejected love affairs in fact so deep seated pain that he is stating here can only be compared to the kids would on melancholy in which he says hey in the very temple of delight veiled melancholy has her sovereign shrine it is truly that in the mood of delight one remembers the sort of full happenings in the moment of delight one can feel how painful how sorrow he is in living so oh to melancholy is a kind of a, a reference to the pain or the acts that kids tries to define here as the poet wishes to join into the domain of night angles creativity in night angles sonorous musical escape how can this route be bridged how can this be an escape route or how can the poet lead himself or elevate it himself into that night angles beautiful creative world the first route he, as he has explained in stanza 1 that um intoxication or rather a kind of drug can lead him into that condition but in the second stanza he further elevates that point that it might be some kind of wine that has that anti mart or that kind of anti mement can lead him into that ecstasy so the second stanza reads in continuation of the stanza 1 So let's read it. The pain like joy that we are just have put a discussion and the states of sleepiness and forgetfulness that the poet wishes to have through the root of intoxication through the root of why through the root of the kind of a fine eating or kind of taking medicine like that of Hemlock. The poet's only design is to enter into the joints, into the the very mart of night angles, sonorous music. But how he can enter into that domain? He is in painful state. His mind, his body aches. So, in that agony, the poet wishes a route so that he can enter the domain of night angle. The first stanza it states how he can enter. in root drinking of hemlock or like that of drinking the afai but is it the root another how he can escape the monotonous presence of his present state of mind so the second stanza is continued he further exaggerates the point that if he takes the wine is it possible he can enter the mouth full of wine that has been cooled under a piece of ground for silent witness for the festivals for the village people for the country song dances so many of the powerful wine is it that wine can make him enter into the state of joyans of night angle how can he escape this present route of his monotony his melancholy his acts so that's the point it states in stanza 2 oh for a drought of a vintage that had been cold a long age in the deep dell part testing of flora and the country green dance provincial song and sunburnt mart so what kind of wine it would make possible kids 
to enter into the domain of giants of height angle. Which kind of wine? Is it the wine that should be cooled enough? That is being so robust and appeal to the countrymen for that taste of flora. Obviously, flora here refers to the flower or the goddess of fertility and flowers, Roman goddess of course. And if such is the case, how? If such is the case with the wine, such attractive, such melodious, such appealing, can this wine be enough to lead him into that state of mind by which he can enjoy the beauty of Nightingale's song? Oh, for a beaker full of warm south, obviously the warm south means the Mediterranean climate in which the south of the France is of course terminating wines from grapes. Will I take that wine so to enter into the domain of night angle, the blissful hypocrite, a fountain on Mount Helicon in Greece, which is a secret place, which is a sacred place that has been frequently visited by the muses as it has been referred to in Greek mythology. Kids himself here imagines, Kids himself here imagines if there's if that fountain ran wine, if that fountain contained the kind of wine by which he can transport his own heart into the realm of night angle, the purple stained mouth with headed bubbles winking at the brim and the purple stained mouth, he would take that glass of wine so to enter into that domain of night angle sonora's music that I might drink and leave the world unseen and with the plead away into the forest stream. So the last two lines is very explanation of this stanza too. The last two line it says the the second one from the last it says that I might drink and leave the world unseen. So it is the dream that he explains into the previous lines by which thing he can enter into the sonora's musical world of night angle and to forget his present state of mind and with the the poet wishes to fade away into the forest dream the poet wishes as by as his imagination goes he wishes to transport his present state of mind into night angle's domain of thinking the cause of night angle's merriment the sonoras and sensuous music of night angle adds to his mind and that kind of music is so attractive for kids that he wishes to transport his soul from this one into that that domain of musicality in stanza 3 kids is rather making a comparison to the present world that he is facing and the world of night angle the present world is of death decay and destruction how the pathetic and painful condition of human being is tormenting the heart of each and every soul and it is no escape for kids too as his own brother's untimely death and and the catastrophic end of his health which is going to be tuberculosis and love affairs with Fanny Brown all these things makes kids possibility of human conditions pathetic but in contrast, the Nightingale's beautiful world is making him a beautiful appeal to that romantic journey into the world of Nightingale, which is full of spontaneity, creativity, and joyance. So, in stanza three, we can have that references of Nightingale's beautiful world. Obviously, it is in vision green of darkness and it also explains the very pathetic conditions of the human being of which the human conditions are battling out each and every second of its living. As we are talking, kids wishes to go to the happy world of night angle leaving this miserable world of man and 
the world in front of him is not of the happy world of night angle, but it's a pathetic one. What he finds? Fade far away, dissolve and quite forget what thou among the leaves hast never known. The weariness, the fever and the fret, here where men sit and here each other grown, where palsy shakes a few sad last grey hairs, where Eve grows pale and spectre thin and dies, where but to think is to be full of sorrow, and little night despair, where beauty cannot keep her lustrous eyes, or new love pine at them beyond tomorrow. So the present world is very contrast to the world of night angle. So the night angle's music or the very night angle fade into the far away and lost into our sight. And we quite cannot get the glimpse of night angle as we cannot get the glimpse of night angle as it remains unseen from us in which leaves you are hiding yourself is never known. Night angle is hidden and in front of us the weariness, the fever, the fret, all these things are the dejected and desolate world of human being. The boredom, the agitation, the anxiety are the turning factor in this earth. Here each other grown in pain, where palsy takes a few, where paralysis is making human beings immovable. So many diseases, so many diseases are making their life cripples. A few last, a few sad last grey hairs, old men are dying, even young are also dying. The youth grows pale, the reference is Kid's personal reference to his brother, John. Personal reference to his brother, who died prematurely. The spectre thin and dies. So, human beings are dying. Countless agonies are investing their lives. But to think is to be full of sorrow. If we think about all these human affairs, we will but be sorrow. The Latinite despair, a despair is being compared to be a woman whose eyes are always laden with tears. Her beauty cannot keep her lustrous eyes. Where beauty or the beloved cannot have the constancy or even where beauty is so short-lived, dies. A new love pine at them beyond tomorrow and new love is fostering even though the old one is not obliterated altogether. So Fanny Brown's reference, the poet's beloved who has left him dejected is also here. So this whole of the stanza is invested with his personal references as well as his reference, references to the human beings. The weariness, the restlessness of the body, the annoyance of the mind, where the agonized cry of the human being, the paralyzed old man's and that of inconsistencies of the lovers and beloveds and each of the young men who are dying and all those death and decay is turning apart the heart of John Keats and he want to escape into the world of night angle. But alas, that night angle is far, far away and dissolved into the greeny leaves. In stanza 4, the poet is already through his imagination into the world of night angle in imaginary world. And he can well see the night angle singing in front of him or near to him in the deep uh, bosom of creativity in the deep bosom of natural affluence. Uh, though it's nocturnal references of beauty, but it at once attracts the, the very romance of poets 
Ethensia or the poet, um, the poet's um, uh, robust wish for meeting with that night angle or the spirit of night angle attracts the poet to venture into that opacity, into that darkness and lead himself into that category of night angles, aesthetic and exuberant and escapist way of full-throated ease and that escapism is possible uh, through imagination only. Only through imagination poet can lead into the world of night angle and that makes his perfect references in stanza 4. Heavy, heavy, for I will fly to thee, not charioted by Bacchus and his parts, but on the viewless wings of poesy. The poet scheme is to escape from this bold and monotonous weird some world into the world of permanence and prominence of night angle. But how? He has stated the roots first of intoxication, then of drinking wines. As in the third stanza, it states how the dejected world is in front of him, bisecting his heart making him further desolate, lonely. He wishes to escape into the world of imagination of night angle, escaping from the hard realities. And this time he again says, Ave, ave, for I will fly to thee. The poet says he will fly into the world of night angle. But in this stanza 4 he says, not charioted by Bacchus and his parts, as it is stated in the Greek mythology, the god of wine is Bacchus, which is not by horse-torn carriage, but it is drawn by leopards. So here the reference of Bacchus and his parts is obviously intoxication of wines. The poet says he will not take wine as an escape route or into the into the intoxication of wine, he will lead himself into the domain of night angle. But he says, he will compose poetry. The viewless wings of poetry or the imaginary words of articulation of poetic imagery or the articulation of poetry by which he wishes to capture the very assonance, very musicality, very sensuousness of night angle. And by this means, he will escape to the root of night angles joints. Through the dull brain perplexes and retards, already with the tender, it is the night. Through the dull brain perplexes and retards, even though poet is devoid of any poetic imagination, his brain is dull, it is full of perplexes, confusion, it is hindering into the way of its forward journey. But even though he is yet to recover from those obstacles and reached into the domain of night angle already with thee, the poet says he is already with the domain of night angles, assonance, musicality, melody, dejecting all the monotony, all the burden. He is with earthly light, tender is the night, soft, sweet and the beautiful are the nights. Happily the queen moon is on her throne, then kids with its sensuous appeal describes the very beauty of the nature in which he is watching at night angle, the beauty of its, it perplexes. It perplexes the beauty of nature, perplexes the poet. The queen moon is on her throne, chattered around by her starry face, starry sky, the skies are full of stars and moon is there, but here there is no light, save part from heaven is with the bridges blown through Vendera's glooms and winding mozy ways. And the poet says, the, when the bridge is blowing and through the, and where the nightingale was hiding, into the green leaves when there is wind 
and the leaves are blown away or aparted the poet can see the night angle and as soon as he sees it he is within the night angle and the very spirit of John Keats the poet is with amalgamated spirit of that nocturnal settings of night angles living nests and nearby trees and that de vivid descriptions of the springtime and that natural sensuous appeal is being exhibited in stanza 5 and it further elevates the point that how the poet is attached with that night angle he is already within that imaginary domain of night angles creative impulse which is the appearance of natural beauty here the reference is nocturnal so let's proceed stanza 5 kids is now transported into the world of night angle if not physically but in imagination in this dark world of night angle as it was hiding itself in the beach and green the listener guesses at what flowers are at his feet he finds his way into a warm elmam darkness where he can only touch and smell and listen to the rapturous song of the night angle this kind of sensuous appeal to the very um, beauty surroundings of the night angle is a nocturnal beauty and that nocturnal beauty is being represented into a beautiful imagery of nature here it reads i can't see what flowers are at my feet nor what soft incense hangs upon the boughs but in mom darkness gets each sweet wherein where with the seasonable month endows the grass the thicket and the fruit tree wild white hawthorn and the pastoral eglantine fast fading violets covered up in leaves and mid may's eldest child the coming musk rose full of dewy wine the marmara's hunt of the flies on summer eaves so this beautiful natural description is here suitably refers to the surroundings of night angle song and where night angle was hiding itself into its beauty location the night angle must be remembered in the previous stanza it has stated that through poetic imagination through the wings of poetic imagination rather the poet wishes to fly into the oblivion into the romantic world of the night angle but the dull brain and the perplexing and retarding brains at present that poet is being paralyzed with is the only hindrance by which he cannot transport himself into the world of night angle but that possibility is uh, they, but there is a possibility by which he can lead himself into that world of romantic exuberance. It is through creativity. It is through creative impulsion. And that creative impulsion leads to the imaginary world of night angle where night angle is hiding itself into the world of beauty, into the world of nature. Even though the scene is nocturnal, the very feelings is aroused of the kids and he can find the beauty surroundings. In stanza 6, uh, the poet is listening or already united with the spirit of night angle and he finds himself uh, attached with the night angle spirit and its experience and its creative impulses and he finds uh, this kind of ecstasy or this kind of uh, robust use of significance of creative arts of night angle with that of his own impulse and of poetic creativity that he find himself united and uh, readily um, that kind of references or that kind of attraction is, suffice, is sufficient for the poet to make a wish and that wish is escapist wish of infancia or youthful death. Simply the poet says that 
in this romantic condition in this in this beautiful uh, affluence and closeness to nature nightingale affluence and its appeal to poetic creativity and giants is quite ready to accept an useful death only the death here is his death of the burden of human existence and the way to enter into the domain of nightingale's creative world so the beautiful reading of style 6 exhibits the core of the theme the intensia and into the entrance of nightingale's creative world in stanza 6 the poet exaggerates the point that he is already lost into the domain of nightingale in the dark where from nightingale's voice is being heard kids is capable of transporting his own soul into that darkness darkling i listen and for many a time i have been half in love with his full death as poet is capable of transporting his own soul into the domain of nightingale and be parallel with the mud with the giants of nightingale for a moment he at that high time thinks himself in love with his full death he is in love with euthanasia a painless death so is the catastrophe of his life so many of the turmoils and timely death of his brother the sad affairs with fanny brown and his own ailing health makes him a sensation of death a wish of death that wish of death should have been a useful one a romantic one that is full death if a medical reference from kids be told as a wish of death without pain and that euthanic medicine can have it from the song called him soft names in many a muse rhymes to take into the air my quiet breath now more than ever seems it rich to die poet has fancied of this is full death or euthanasia and he says this is the high time this is the rich time to die because with the proximity of nature with the proximity of exuberance eloquence and sonorous music of nightingale one should fancy of dying because it is the perfect moment a romantic poet could have wished to seize upon the midnight with no pain while thou art putting forth thy soul abroad in such an ecstasy the night angel should have been singing the song in its full exuberance and the poet slowly and steadily without any pain died into this physical death and transport his soul into the domain of the spiritual ecstasy till lord thou sing and i have ears in vain to thy high requiem become a sword so the last two lines it says your song will be spontaneous will be ever enchanting and it will appeal my heart and slowly and steadily i will die i will be alert but vain that should be as my ears should not be or would not be possible to hearing your song as i will be dead and your song that you will still singing at my dead body will be like like that of a requiem like that of a funeral songs and it would be sung on my graveyard in stanza 7 the poet says that uh, the immortality of the night angel the night angel the pieces die several times but night angel the pieces never die or the immortality of the beauty of the night angel song is uh, run through generation after generation though night angel the bard 
is hardly seen in England and after the industrial period uh, right angle the bird is becoming a rare species even though um, night angle attracts so many of the English birds and kids is no exception in that and kids here lines reads as an immortality of the night angle song or the creative creativity the spontaneity and the ever joins references of night angle song is so appealing that it will remain ever fresh enchanting and ever elusive for the creative writers like poets or the song so it's happy reading in stanza sir here it says thou was not born for day the immortal bard no hungry generations tread the down the voice i hear this passing night was heard in ancient days by emperors and clown perhaps the self some song that found a path through the sad heart of truth when sick for home she stood in tears amid the elm corn same that of time hath charmed magic casements opening on the foam of perilous seas in fairy lands forlorn this stanza it reads the immortality of nightingale's beautiful music it says the nightingale's be- beauty or its references to the songs are so sonorous and they are immortal the piece is the bird is not immortal but the song it continued generation after generation as it continued one by one is like that of, of an immortality eternal and there are so many of the human beings so many of the human civilization who are torn apart by some foul emotions hungry generations refers to the hot heat tempers of civilizations which has hurt so many of our emotions spoiled so many of our soft corners but the immortality of the part song is still immortal and will remain so forever he then refers that this song as this song has been immortal as is as it is as appealing to the emperor as appealing to the clown as appealing to the simple man as appealing to the high position this song is self same self sufficient self composed it is never borrowed from others devoid of any artificiality and that song might have touched the sad heart of ruth here its reference to hellenism is quite evident the greek story it says the story of ruth the ruth was a moabite woman married to a jew in moab when her husband died she migrated to the land of judah in palestine to share her mother in law's troubles the story of ruth occurs in bible and that biblical story is here being referred to in kitsian poetry or to night angel as her heart was sad as she was in alien lands away from her dear ones kids draw a romantic image of ruth standing in the field of corn listening to the night angel song as tears roll down her cheeks her sorry heart is soothed only by the night angel song as it has been soothing the heart of kids in this present predicament same had been to the ruth and so many of the roots in the history or human civilizations again it says the bard has not even experienced the weariness the fever and the fright of the world of immortality throughout ages emperors clowns poets damsels have heard the bard song in the fairy lands forlorn the very word forlorn is to be noted here to enter into the world of night angel collapses the forlorn as it continued in the next stanza is very important the fairy land those perilous seas those of the high 
home those of the magic cat spends these are all fantasy like that of medieval charm akin to gothic literature and all these things attracted kids to an imaginary world of night angle where so many of the civilizations so many of the civics have soothed their heart by listening night angle's beautiful song in stanza 8 we can find out kids is returning into the reality the poet has already been with night angle and he was lost in the imaginary world of night angles exuberance creativity and its joyance the very spirit of youthful exuberance and its creative impulse is so appealing to kids that he, in his imagination he was already living throughout the stages into the domain of night angle but the hard realities put him down into the very fact that he is lonely and night angle is far far away from his reach so this is a pessimistic references at the end point where he, where he cannot unite with the night angle perpetually but at least there is a hope that even though he is lonely at least if the creativity or if the creative urge is so appealing in a creative urge or in a creative soul of the poet can readily imagine a night angle even though it is not here the spontaneity of flow of powerful emotion that recollects in tranquility as in what's what the words comes true in kitsian line when it says that he has the full ability to reunite with the night angle whenever he wishes if he is in tranquil mood as he was reading in the garden and writing this poem the reading of the night angle song or the very um, soulful reading of night angle's music in this lesser mode as he is able to transport his own soul into the night angle so whenever he has the opportunity to transport us of his own inner feeling into that of night angle there is a possibility of the creative impulse and that he being a poet can readily transport into the domain of night angle that is the challenge and that challenge is being fulfilled only by a creative artist like that of a kids or the like in continuation of the last word of the stanza 7 we can find out the word forlorn the very word dejected or the meaning lonely the forlorn it says forlorn the very word is like a bell to toll me back from the to my soul self already the poet has returned into the reality of his self living the night angle's beautiful world of musicality and the word forlorn is like that of a bell that put him back into reality at all the fancy cannot sit so well as she is fame to do deceiving ill the poet says if a man can have been a fanciful as he was in as he was in in night angles parallel world of beauty and so many of the beautiful references or reading of the night angles heart or night angles eternity or immortality of night angles musicality kids is quite ready to leave this world and to remain into that world but that is the poetic skill it is not in reality so the poet is hurled back into reality that is the fancy can not sit so well as she is fame to do deceiving elf so fancy or imagination has been called an elf who is always ready to deceive and had to had to die plenty and them pets die plentiful and them like that of a religious song like that of a pious song of night angle which is akin to 
nature or a prayer to nature gradually fades and gradually fades into oblivion past the near meadows over the still streams here you can have that imagination the bird is flying as well physically as well in poets imaginary imaginary world the bird is fading away into the world of meadows into the still stream up the hillside and now it is buried deep into the next valley glades now the night angle escapes night angle flown away physically as well as from the imagination of john keats and that fading away and poets hurling back into the reality makes him or asks him a question was it a vision or a waking dream was it this hearing the night angle in reality was it all an imaginary aspect was it all a dream or is it a true dream beautiful as like that of a dream yet it is a reality played is that music the music that was once sonorous resounding and revivating into the soul of night angle into the into the soul of john keats into the soul of the poetic imagination is flying away that hard reality put the poet asks him further do i wake or sleep am i in my dream or am i in my reality so here the world of imagination the world of fantasy the world of dream the world of arcane the world of stupor is all broken into pieces as if the reality is stuck into the hard chasm of dreams hard chasm of fancy hard chasm of imagination and that imaginary cracks are make the wheel rolling which we call civilization as keeps the parts and is rolling still now in its creative art in its creativity in its exuberance of expressing his own imagination and it is all possible because of his escapism because of his imaginary escapism and that imaginary escapism is being possible by notation of nature a purity of nature and that as has been represented through the song of night angel so thank you for patient hearing of my this lecture and reading of the poem kids ode to night angel and that particular ode has taught us two basic things the kids and poetry that it terms and conditions by which it delivers its message of loving a natural phenomena and expressing his point of view through that medium and number two how a beautiful person like john keats is burdened with so many of the pathos and losses and how he universally transports his personal emotions into a universal feelings and that feeling is, has made this world a beautiful one and the note of melancholy or the despair that it adds throughout the poem also makes a point that uh, kitsian poetry even though it is pathetic it has the visual sense in its in way of rendering a new meaning of melancholia or reading a melancholy or the sorrows or the burden or despairs in our heart even the nature has that thrilling power to lead that melancholy into an ecstasy and night angle is an exquisite example of that references so like share comment and obviously subscribe so to take a full course of my lectures as well as your questioning and my from my end the ultimate answers that i will try to deliver to you through my lectures so bye bye